Hello, and welcome to Maya Foundations Workshop Week 2 bonus video. This week I will be presenting an easy and fast technique for modeling complicated and organic room decor. This technique is designed to work free form or with an actual design in mind. I will be covering the technique from start to finish, beginning with building a base geometry, whether it be polygon or surface, primitive or complex, through the process of applying and modifying the formers, and increasing resolution in problem areas once the modeling is done, and then following up with a conclusion on the technique. This organic modeling technique can start with any geometry as its base. It can be polygons, nerves, primitives, or more complicated shapes. Um, what's really important is just keeping the history on the object so that you can go back and forth and tweak it as you're going along. As this is a more of a freeform technique, it's going to be important to keep the history of all your, your operations you've done on the geometry so that you can actually uh, tweak the end result to be as professional looking as possible. Um, so what we have on the screen here is some polygon primitives, some NURBS primitives and a curve that I'm going to revolve into a more complicated shape. So the first step in uh, creating the geometry is to give it enough resolution to, uh, to make it form these more complicated shapes. So this is a polygon cube and the first and foremost most important thing is is keeping that that shape node so you can just go in and increase your subdivisions as you see fit. And then down the road, you're actually going to increase the subdivision some more when you see that there will be some problem areas based on how, how much bending of the uh, shape you're actually doing. So I'm just going to go through here and increase the subdivisions enough and for NURBS, the sections and spans, so that we can get some nice end results. And for this curve here, I'm going to just do a simple revolve. The nice thing also is that you have access to the sections here to um, give it enough resolution in these operations we're going to be doing. Now on to the meat of the technique, which is really knowing how to apply and tweak the deformers to get the most out of your shapes. So I'm going to go and play around with this cube and try to make uh, a table stand uh, pretty quickly. So the main deformers that I'll be using is the bend, the flare, the uh, squash, and the twist sum. And, and uh, maybe if I need a little uh, manual modification at the end, I'll use the lattice tool. So I'm going to go in and make a blend, uh, bend and just start playing with it. Try and find some nice shapes that the, that the, the geometry makes. And next... I'll apply a flare to really, you know, flare out the uh, geometry. What I really like about this tool is this curve attribute, which allows for this kind of scaling in the middle to kind of bulge it out or thin it in. I think that really adds a lot just for one attribute. Um, and I'm going to broaden out the base a little bit of the table and you can see now what I was talking about about the uh, resolution of the geometry you can start to see it uh, needing more resolution now the two methods you can do is just press the smooth mesh, mesh preview or you can increase the actual subdivisions here uh, for now I'm just going to use a smooth mesh preview um, and if I need to I'll increase the resolution later on um, so at this point I have starting of a nice uh, modernistic uh, table base. 
um, but he's a little flat on the front. So just to add a little something to the front, I'm going to apply a wave. And he's going a little bit the wrong direction. I'm just going to turn him around so I can get him in a position oriented better with the table. And he's a little strong, but you know, this is a very free form. It's this um, activity. It's really your personal taste. Um, so it's pretty much open to debate, but I just wanted to break up the front surface of this geometry to give it a little bit more, you know, pizzazz. Um, and then once I kind of have a table base, I'm going to create items to place on the table using different types of geometry and different type of techniques. And now I'll move on to this torus to try and create some something interesting to put on the table. Um, I'm going to start with the a bend modifier again. Um, just to move things around this is one of my more favorite modifiers to try and just start getting something interesting from a real simple shape. And once I kind of bend it around a little bit to get something a little interesting to whatever my liking is, I usually add a flare just to really bend it out into something ah, that's interesting uh, something that could be a sculpture or a vase or maybe a corner piece or some type of hardware on a table so I like this shape I think I could use this um, for something to put on the table, depending on what else I create. But, and this is where I'll go back and forth between the tools to try and adjust the shape. That's why I was saying before, it's very important to keep the history on of all these tools. Don't delete them yet until you're happy with everything. Now, this guy's resolution was really high and you see that he's really good. You uh, don't really see any issues unless you get really close. But he looks like he might be like a small ornament or something on the table. So he's good to use as is. Now I'm going to play around with this NURBS primitive. Uh, I'm going to just maybe uh, just try and flare out the top to give him... A little something different and you can see that the the, um, the mesh itself is a little too big so this is where it's good to keep the history again and now that I'm kind of playing around I kind of find out different shapes I want to make as I'm in the middle of doing it which aids the creativity process and another thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually move the deformers up and have them just focus on specific parts of the geometry. So let's see, maybe I'll just really flare out this top here and give him a little curvature. And let's see if I wanted to make a flower or something to fill up a vase. This is, looks like kind of where I'm going with this. So you can also um, just uh, affect part of the geometry. See, I took off this lower bound. See if I there is lower bounds affected, and I can remove them, and it's just the top part being bended. Um, and I'm gonna try something a little different. I'll just twist the whole thing up. See if I can make a bit of a flower or some type of structure. So this is good, and 
And I'll shrink them down later on and, and um, see if I can make a vase with this next geometry. All right, so what we did was I drew out this curve profile and I just um, revolved out this surface. And he actually, I did a lot of deformers on him to make some type of interesting glass vase. And since there's so many steps with this one, I'm just going to show you the end result. And I'll move him out of his deformers and you'll see that he is, um, there's a lot going on, a lot of flares, waves. I'll, I'll bring over the outliner real quick. You can see he's got a bend, a flare, a wave, some bends, and a twist at the end. So I kind of just went real free form and just kind of molded something that I thought looked good that I can put on top of a table. So two things I noticed, I, you know, he can actually have like a candle up here and I could animate a flame on top here, or I can try and stick these, stick these kind of glass lily pad uh, flower uh, accessories and open up this top and stick them in there. Um, what I wanted to show you about him is that you can see that he's getting stretched pretty far at the bottom. At the top, he looks good. A lot of resolution, nice curved features. At the bottom, he's actually starting to get some artifacts, as you can see, and he's not going to look too good. So I just wanted to show you some how to increase the resolution to uh, solve these issues. So right now, he's a complicated shape. You can't go into his way back to his um, previous history and um, uh, just add more resolution. It's going to be adding it everywhere. So with since he is a NURB, a geometry, I can actually select isoparms, which are these lines running down, and actually add some extra geometry to him. See, I'll select this one, I'll hold shift. Maybe I'll hold, bring one down here, and there's a lot of room down here. Maybe I'll just pop in one more. And now I have these three isoparms, and if I go to the surfaces menu, edit NURBS, insert isoparms, you see that there's more resolution was added, and that he's much more refined and doesn't have these artifacts along the bottom anymore. And here's the end result of my modeling technique. Here you'll see the table leg that I created with the polygon cube. Uh, here's the glass decanter that I created. Um, I decided to leave it as a candle and uh, animate a flame on top. And here are these um, Tauruses that I turned into some type of modern sculpture and here are these NURB cylinders that I turned into these glass lily pads or glass flowers or some type of sculpture that I intertwined with the other sculpture so in a relatively brief time I was able to create a pretty advanced organic shapes that will really spruce up a room instead of just the walls in the in the furniture and to follow through the technique it was creating just a base geometry whether uh, polygon primitives NURBS primitives surfaces um, being created from curves or more advanced um, box modeling or curve techniques but taking these base geometries keeping their history applying deformers onto them and keeping their history and then going back and forth and tweaking both the resolution of the geometry and the characteristics of the of the deformers to achieve a really organic and complex shapes in a short amount of time and without using any um, reference images um, if you had none available.